So yes, so I saw Call Me By Your Name, and uh, I'm giving the movie the trash. This is my review. Now normally, in this part of the movie, we would say, we would warn you about spoilers, but uh, I'm happy to say that there are no fucking spoilers, because we have seen this movie 10,000 times before. If you've seen a coming-of-age film, especially a coming-of-age film that came out in the late 90s, early 2000s, you've seen this movie before. Uh, cross that with any like feature-length pornography that came out like late 70s, early 80s. Um, that's it. It was like sort of a hybrid between those two uh, genres of films. And uh, yeah, if you've seen one or multiple versions of, of either of those uh, uh, genres, then then you've seen absolutely everything that this that uh, this movie has to offer. So. Um, on the record, spoiler alert, off the record, there's not going to be any fucking spoilers. And I guess that that's my first indictment of this movie, is that it brings absolutely nothing new to the fucking table. A lot of people are talking about the gay representation in this movie, and I'm arguing that there is no gay representation in this movie. For one, they are not gay in any meaningful way. Uh, the only way that they are gay is because they're men that are... You know that there's two men that happen to have sex with each other and um as far as gay representation goes Pornhub has you beat you know what if that is your standard for gay representation I have you beat last time I had sex I took a video and you know what there was fucking on it you could see the fucking you could hear the fucking and that was like way more than what this movie had to offer sex scene in this movie was like we're looking out the window listening to crickets, which irritates the shit out of me because crickets, when they're making that noise, they are not having sex, they're trying to get laid. And there's just some like weird irony about like portraying uh, sexual intercourse by referring to insects not having sex. But anyway, uh, furthermore, the these characters uh, not only are not like, gay in any meaningful way they're straight acting and when i say straight acting i don't mean that they're like you know drinking beer or you know have strong opinions about not the nfl or do keg stands or anything like that i mean they're having sex with women they are passing as heterosexual men and um the i think that's problematic in that like they, they don't like it wasn't like a thing about oh these people are bisexual um it was you know they were just fucking their beards and that was the official story and so the if they were gay they were not gay in any out way and which is particularly interesting because like in the environment that they were in there was no like gay no significant amounts of gay hostility and, and finally, there was, like, no reference to anything that was happening in, like, the larger gay world. So this, this took place in 1983. Now, if you think that there's, like, a lot of gay shit that's happening now in 2018, it is nothing compared to what was happening in 1983. Now, 1983, that was, like, the, like, not the birth of the AIDS epidemic, but that's when the AIDS epidemic was getting huge. That was when, from all over the world it was um it was a concern for gay people and uh no one was 100 percent sure how it was transmitted nobody was 100 percent sure if it was uh treated and at the time it looked like everyone who caught it died it was horrifying now mind you this came at the end not at the end but sort of at the tail end of this gay liberation movement. And when I say gay liberation movement, I mean, it was political in character, but it was much more than that. It, it had a very big sexual character as well, where um, the, the, this, this gay liberation movement was very much about trying, you know, re-examining sex outside the context of like heteronormativity and, uh, and things that you still see the impact of today. Like if you're on, Craigslist or whatever, and someone's like, yo, will you pee on my face? 
that is something that has its roots in the sexual liberation movement of the 1970s. Um, and this was something that that doesn't come across at all in, in the movie. There's um, no gay club, no gay bar, no rainbow flag, no gay liberation movement, no HIV, nothing. There's no, uh, this, this whole story existed inside of a little tiny gay uh, northern Italian romantic bubble. And um, to talk about that from the point of view of gay representation, like I don't live in you know, a happy bubble. None of us do. So what sense does it make to talk about this from the point of view of gay representation? Now, um, my, my third issue with this is, so um, Elio was, is 17 in the movie, and Oliver, I don't think they mentioned Oliver's age, but the actor who plays Oliver is 31 years old, so there's a little bit of an age difference there. Now, for the record, I don't have a problem. I have, like, zero problem with... Um, with that age difference, especially since 17 is above the age of consent in, um, in Italy. But my, the problem that I do have with it is that um, there is like a significant like power mismatch there. Like this is like this story took place at Elio's house, at Elio's home, and he's 17 and has like no legitimate way to flee if he starts feeling uncomfortable or if he feels endangered or if he doesn't like what's going on and Oliver on the other hand is a traveler that co that came here from the United States and so he has a tremendous amount of of resources and ability to leave the situation if he ever does become if, if the situation ever becomes uncomfortable for him and this was like a situation that was never really like addressed in any way about like Oliver sort of being sure that Elio was comfortable with what was going going on and that is like kind of rapey in a way that like you know like on one side there's like everyone in the room was like oh my god that's so romantic and while me on the other hand I'm like having flashbacks to to uh, Twilight and this, you know, vampire guy is like hovering over Bella being like, <laughs> I like watching you sleep. Uh, it's creepy as fuck. Um, and not, like don't get me wrong, I am all for like power mismatch. I mean like I, I'm a dom, I put the D in BDSM but when you do that, you have to have, like, a lot of discussions and and honesty and communication about about comfort levels and safety that, that was just skipped over in this movie and in a lot of movies, actually, come to think of it. Um, you know, we sort of gloss it over in the, in the names of being, of being romantic. And I think that's, um, that's really problematic, especially considering, um, you know, the, the worst aspect of, of this sort of abuse of power is, um, my, my number four point, is that for, for Oliver, this was, um, this was like an example of sexual tourism for him. Uh, he was in town for six weeks and, uh, I mean, he was there on other business, but like, you know, fucking the 17 year old kid was like, I don't know, one of the perks or something. And um, the, the Elio fell in love with him and Oliver, mind you, when we find out at the end of the movie, spoiler alert, I guess, uh, was that, that he's engaged to a woman back home. Um, he has a fiance back home that he's uh, about to get married to. And so... Like, again, I don't have a problem with sexual tourism in and of itself as long as everyone is on the same page with it. But everyone's not on the same page with it. Elio wasn't on the same page with it. Elio had no idea that, you know, that no matter what happens between him and Oliver, that he's going back home to, you know, Oliver's going back home to his beard back in the States. And um, that is... Um, 
like just a really sort of kind of fucked up um dishonesty and and exploitiveness that you know that everyone right now is talking about oh how romantic this is and um right so i don't think this is a good uh this is a something that we should be looking to for our cues on romance and i certainly don't think that this should, should be what we're looking to for our cues uh for representation again for the four reasons one uh we've seen this shit a bunch of times before uh two is not gay in any meaningful way it's sort of like gay in a bubble that's outside of any like any context that we can relate to in our lives uh three it's uh the power mismatch was very abusive uh specifically four with the sexual tourism and um yes movie was fucked up zero stars